25 years before I found somebody that I could talk to. I had moved to northern Wisconsin. Um, I was a sled dog racer and the Ojibwe tribe in northern Wisconsin, I met one of their priests and healers and I have a, uh, a pipe. Their healers have two main tools. They have a, a healing pipe and a sweat lodge and a, a pipe came to me. And the only way you can be an Ojibwe pipe carrier is the pipe has to find you. That way they know the Creator has picked you out. You can't buy them, you can't make them, you can't ask somebody to give them to you. It has to come to you. The pipe came to me in an unusual way. I sell jewelry. I make vintage beaded jewelry. I was at a store that I sold my products at and he had other ceremonial pipes in his showcase that I was looking at waiting for the owner to come out. He uh, come out of the back room, he said, you can't buy one of those. And I said, I know, I'm too poor, I don't have the money to buy one of those. He said, no, no, wait, I'll be right back. And he came out with a pipe and he said, this belongs to you. I said, I don't think so. I said, I can't afford it. And he says, no, let me tell you the story. He says, I've had it for 20, over 20 years. The man who made it told me that I couldn't sell it, that I needed to keep it until the owner of the pipe showed up and that I would know when the pipe owner arrived. And he says, you're the pipe owner and handed me the pipe. He'd had the pipe for 20 some years and had given it to me. I, I met a native in a coffee shop and I heard him talking about a spiritual program that he had, that he followed. And I says, oh, I have a pipe. Do you know any pipe carriers? And he looked at me and said, where did you buy it? And I said, well, I didn't buy it. I said, it was given to me. I said, I don't know much about it except to be respectful of it. And he says, oh, it was given to you. Um, tell me the story. So I explained to him. He said, yes, I do know a, a pipe carrier, Robert Van Zyl, who was a, a Madewan apprentice at that time, apprentice priest who was just getting ready to be, take his, have his initiation. So he called him up, told Robert that there was this white guy with a pipe at his house and that I needed, wanted information. Well, it took a year for him to decide to talk to me. I would get phone messages through my other friend, Fuji Whitefish. And after a year, I was invited to a sweat lodge and to bring my pipe along. So in the teaching before the sweat lodge, there was an elder, Porky White, that had come in from Minnesota. Robert asked him if he would bless my pipe and me so that I could use it, and he wasn't too happy with a white guy with a pipe. He was an older man who had good reason not to like white people. Um, but, but he heard the story of how the pipe came to me, and he said, sit down. So I sat down with my pipe, my medicine bundle on the floor, he did the ceremony, he blew life into my pipe, he blew life into me, told me how to use it, I said go ahead, use your pipe, now, you, now you're a pipe carrier. I, have a, I carry a men's healing pipe, which the Ojibwe, they have four different kinds of pipes. They have a men's pipe, they have a women's pipe, they have a community pipe, and they have a personal pipe. Personal pipe you use with nobody but yourself. Community pipe you use with the whole community. Women's pipes, only women smoke them. Men can be in the ceremony, but you touch the stem. You don't smoke the pipe. Men's pipe is the same way. Women can be in the ceremony, but they don't smoke the pipe. They touch the stem when they go around. The healing is the same. There's no difference. Everybody gets the same healing.